We've also got some big economic data on tap this shortened trading week as we look ahead to the June jobs report on Friday. Yelena Shiletyeva, who is the BNP Paribas senior U.S. economist, still with us. All right, headline figure, what should we be expecting here? Well, we are expecting uh, 230,000, uh, and we expect a little bit of a retracement in the unemployment rate. So that these are the top line numbers. But I think what will be more important to see is what private sector jobs are, because the headline number could be distorted a little bit this time in June and July in particular by uh, scarcity of teachers. And those of us who have young kids, we have mm. we know that you know, like there's a lot of uh, questions about uh, how to get more teachers and we, we don't have as many. So what it means is that seasonally, uh, seasonally adjusted numbers uh, will probably be a little bit more um, elevated mm. because we're not laying off as many teachers as we usually are. Right. Because there are not as many. So the, the headline number could be a little bit elevated, but what we need to look at is the private sector jobs. That's where all the high tech, um, you know, jobs are finance jobs. Mm. We need to see whether this is holding up or not, and that will mean a lot for uh, what we expect for economic growth. But couldn't the growth in AI be supportive of the case for continued strength within tech jobs? Sure, but that's not what we're seeing, right? That's probably a longer term perspective. I think it's probably not imminent. So. We do expect a downturn, and it may not be a very severe one. It will be a mild one in our view, but probably this is something that would help us increase productivity going forward, and it's good for uh, growth, for potential growth going forward. Probably not as much in, in the second half of the year. You know, I, I was really excited to speak about jobs with you this morning because we're in the midst of the experience economy season. People are out yeah. there, they're, they're active, they're on vacations, they're, you know, trying to either make their flights or make sure that the flight still takes off <laughs> yes, to whatever extent that part. they can do so. <laughs> Uh, but right now, there's, it seems like there's a disconnect because there's still leisure and hospitality that is about 2.1% off of its pre-pandemic level here at a time where you've got some of the CEOs of travel, leisure companies, accommodations companies saying that demand is at this counter-cyclical recovery or resurgence um, as opposed to the rest of the economy right now. So how do we kind of pair that together mm -hmm. with what we're seeing in the demand versus where the where the amount of workers are for leisure and hospitality? Well, I think um, the answer is uh, twofold. So first of all, we have a lot of excess savings, mm -hmm. but they're dwindling really quickly. So we are basically expecting that to be over uh, by the end of this year. So that what was driving uh, growth in the services sector, because people who still had savings, they were spending on vacations because we were so eager to go out there and um, you know, finally, you know, go somewhere on vacation. But um, another thing is uh, the strength of the labor market, right, mm -hmm. overall. So as long as we have jobs, as long yeah. as uh, we, uh, we see increases in paychecks, yes, we will keep on spending. But that is, the, the issue here is that a lot of higher paid jobs, they see a lot of layoffs at the time. So... And again, my argument is that you cannot replace all these um, you know, high-tech, higher-paid jobs with jobs in leisure and hospitality. That will impact aggregate income growth, and that in turn will impact overall spending on, on leisure and hospitality and vacations. So you cannot just have a recession in one sector of the economy. When it starts, it affects everybody. I, I hear you. Um, I guess the, probably the skepticism that's on my on my face is I've underestimated the payrolls number month after month. I've given up trying to even make a tally because, you know, we keep blowing past them month after month after month. So it's kind of hard to see the um, expectation for this downtrend. And especially like when you make the point about the high paying jobs, sure, they are being impacted, but there's more jobs on uh, the lower end of the scale than on the higher end of this, the scale, relatively speaking. Uh, so I guess, what is the, what's my blind spot here? Well, uh, you know, you're not alone, right? So it's been uh, it's a price to the upside for 12 mm. months in a row. So 13 may be a, a right. lucky term. So I, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, 
jobs have been resilient and, and the, there have been a lot of structural changes again. So there's still deficit of this lower paid jobs out there. That's why companies are hoarding the existing labor force. Mm -hmm. We did see some um, declines in jobs plentiful, uh, mm -hmm. if you look at the consumer uh, survey. Right. So they're not as plentiful and we do see a confirmation in Indeed data. So the company that tracks right. job openings. Uh, at the same time, companies are not laying off people en masse. So, mm -hmm. and that's where the disconnect lies, right. I think. So I, we're not seeing as, as many hirings. That's what I'm trying to okay. say, which will, uh, I think, eventually uh, get into the layoffs uh, stage. Cycle. Okay. Yeah. Yelena Shiletyeva, who is the BNP Paribas Senior U.S. Economist. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Thank you.